Yes. So there is scientific research now that uh, for every, as I said before, for a woman, a man is entering her, it's different. We are receiving. So um, science, you know, there, there's evidence now that the DNA of the man that we've slept with is in our body. So, or, and, you know, spiritually, I guess, you know, you could say his spirit or there's a part of him that's, that's in our body. Yeah. So that, that's what we call soul ties too. It's often used as that word. Um, so for women, it's like uh, we have, you know, we, we haven't been taught to be very careful, you know, who we share seminal fluid with. <laughs> And, and men are affected too, but I my argument is that women more so and women are more at risk because our brain is different as well because we, um, we are emotional. All our hemispheres of our brain are connected more. We have, have more connections in our brain. So when we have intercourse with somebody, a, a, an intimate experience it's like it's connecting on the emotion it's on all hemispheres yes. to a deeper level than it is with a man so we get emotionally connected in more also women um so we we and in our evolutionary dna we can argue against this i know in our evolutionary dna we are designed to want a man to come back Yes, because it's it's like when women have um, sex to protect with, us. Yes, when women have sex with men for the first time, they often feel like they've fallen in love with that person emotionally. That's like a chemical thing, I think, that happens. And at, at a biological level, it's to be able to um, continue the procreation of the species as well. I guess. Yes, absolutely. So and and. With women too, women are more at risk in in the sense that um, when, like, if a woman gets an STI, a, you know, it, she can she can become infertile. It can affect her ability to be able to have children later on. Um, I knew of the I know of this really uh, really sad case of this this girl. She was a virgin. She went to um, Greece for a holiday. And she, she, she was her first sexual relationship with a guy, a Greek guy on the Greek islands. And um, she, she, got, um, oh, she got genital warts so bad internally, she had to fly home and be burnt out. And I don't know what's happened to her. And maybe she can't have children. I don't know. But it's far more problematic for women mm -hmm. and and also i see it in my practice that if a, if a if a woman's had a negative her first sexual experience has been negative yeah um because if we're just sort of going oh it's okay i can have sex with this person it's only fun or whatever but if that sexual experience isn't respectful or caring or the guy's rough or whatever um that can affect her into the rest of her life yeah so that's like, this one's very crucial that first relationship you're saying. that's an imprint that's why sexual abuse if people have been sexually abused it's a it's a big imprint mm. that um sometimes makes people play out um uh, be very promiscuous mm -hmm. and other times all shut people down and it's like that thing where people say you know your first love is is so powerful you know like it's not like any other love because there's something about that first relationship that that can you know you can have someone that you'll never get over you know, it, it, because the energy is so strong in that first relationship. You know, a lot of people say, oh, my first love was my greatest love and da-da-da-da, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Yes, and it, it creates an imprint. So um, 
and it does for men as well but my argument is and i as i said i I've, I've got a lot of flack from this yes women can have sex physically we can we can do whatever we want to do there's no rules i'm, I'm not moralizing it's no. just there's karma or there's impact there's impact around our sexual behaviors and it affects men and women differently but yes and it's got we're to be differently we're set up differently Yes, and, and, um, and, you know, I was listening to a guy on a, a, a podcast who was a, a porn, he was a porn star or whatever you want to call them, <laughs> play, he, um, and he was saying, and this is a classic, classic example, see, see the, the guys that, that are porn actors, they, they can do gangbangs and more easily and all that. And he was saying that that girls who, if they go straight into a gangbang, they'll have a breakdown. Yeah, yeah. Because women are not emotionally geared for that. No, no. That's and true. also, this is my intuition. I, I just sense it is, and I in my practice and working with couples, I sense that with women, the body is, um, um, so if a woman's had a lot of different partners and then she decides she wants to create a relationship with a guy, so the body's biology is confused because the, the body is trying to work out who is the best partner to have children with. Yeah. So if there's been all these different chemistry and going into the body, the, 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 the body's confused and it's like, oh, she doesn't know what, who she wants to have children with. Well, I don't, know, I don't know whether I want her to be with this person. Like, so it's, it's like her whole body wants to reject the man that she might choose after that to have a relationship with. It's, I, send, I, I can't prove this, but I sense it's like a, a biolo biological thing. It's like that, 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 that space hasn't been cleared enough. Yes. Those energy ties haven't been cleared enough. That sacred space hasn't been cleared enough from other partners. So the body knows, okay, you choose this man to be the father of your children. Yeah, yeah. It's like what I was saying before, in, in, you're saying it in a different way, that um, when you accumulate energetically all the energies of these partners, you become very scattered and fragmented, but you're seeing the actual physical body, which has its own intelligence and it has its own communication system and, and it's like a personality in itself, it has its own needs and you're saying that on that level it can become very um, complicated and confused about what it it's meant to align with because it's got so many choices and, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, the body's sort of, yeah, it's rejecting. It wants to reject that. Yeah. 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 And, um, and also women are prone to, you know, um, a man not treating her very well and, and being torn down below or different things like that. So a woman is far more at risk um, of, of violence or, or whatever than, than guys are. Yeah. Um, and that's not to say we can't do it. We can do whatever we like. And, and also there's a... There's a, there's a shame that goes with that. And, I, and it happens with men as well. I see it with men. Yeah. Unfortunately, playing around in this space, there's shame and guilt in this space more so because the soul knows it's not in your best interest. And culturally too, women are very vilified for having, you know, numerous partners, whereas men, you know, it's often, you know, a bit of a badge of honour if they've had a lot of partners. So there's a real cultural difference as well. Yes, externally, but what I when I see men face to face and they go deep, they 
They're not yes. proud of it either. Yes. They're not sit there and say, oh, I love having, I love to, you know, when you're really authentic and honest, they won't say, oh, porn's really great. I feel really good after porn, you know. I feel really good about myself or there's no man that I have come across, okay, unless they're a psychopath or totally shut down or whatever, but I don't tend to attract those people, but it's like there's no man that will say to me after I just go out and I have a physical, you know, I have a hookup or something with a girl mm. that they'll feel good about themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? They have a greater sense of self. Yeah. It doesn't expand their sense of self. There's a sense of, um, and I, I know if you can create up a really beautiful boundaries and integrity and have a conversation or whatever, you have to be very aware to do that. Mm. Um, and even in that space, hormones can take over and, um, you know, people don't have those conversations when their hormones are going. Yes. You know what it is too? I think it's because it's such a um, taboo area of um, discussion in our society and it's so hidden, our sexuality. It, we don't, you know, talk about it openly. It's also therefore an area where our shadow self is Plays out. exposed because it's all hidden. And so unconsciously we're working with our shadow aspect with this sexuality and then it brings up all these sort of issues because of that yes and 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 working down sort of in the lower chakras you know there's and and people that are playing in that space more usually have to have uh drugs and alcohol because you have to shut your heart down yes. to, do, to do swinging and to uh, hook up. I'm just looking at a few of them. You know, like prostitution and and if you think about um, you you know the the pedophilia that goes on. You know that we're we're dealing That's with at, at the moment. Like this is coming from this this space. Absolutely. It's various, right? It's not in humanity's best right. interest. And pedophilia, rape, all those things are the are this satanic or this evil face of sexuality, and and we've been we've been drawn into this complete to, connection from the, from people's um, true self and their humanity and their spirituality and their heart, the heart space, because we have to shut the heart to play in this space, yeah. and in that, and that's why you know. You know, there's suicide and there's depression and psychosis and, you know, even with marijuana, um, with weed now, it's, it's got far, it's got a lot more higher cocktail, you know, substance in it that is creating more psychosis now. I mean, a lot of people don't know that. Mm. And so then you've got you've got the brain not functioning properly and being in these spaces as well where people get more hurt or they've got personality disorders or and there's abandonment and there's rejection and there's fear comes up. Like it's it's a minefield to, to be playing in this space. And um, But our society is pushing that through movies, through porn, through... Um, you know, you, I don't know whether you know the website called um, um, Madison, Ashley Madison? No, no. You know, it's for people who are in marriages or in relationships. If you're bored, have an affair. That's the slogan. Oh. Fuck somebody else's wife. Oh. You know, it's, and it's, there's millions of people on that site. Yeah. Millions and millions of people. So it's like... People are looking for this fulfilment, as you said, outside of themselves and disconnecting from the heart and the spirit and 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 the cosmic consciousness of God, which is the very thing that's going to give us our fulfilment. What what they what they're doing with relationships, uh, really, essentially, is they they're trying to have their um, fulfillment and and the feel-good feelings that come from your connection to source or to the divine they're trying to get it through a relationship 
But relationships can't give you that because they, it's a completely different energy. And so then you get very frustrated and dissatisfied with your relationship because it can't give you all those things. It's not capable of that. That's not what it's there for. 100%. Mm. 100%. Yeah. And this thing about, you know, the other narrative it's cheating and lies is okay, you know, because it's on television, you know, people having affairs. Well, people always have had affairs, but we're moving into a different paradigm now that we need to look at this. But it, it's like it really is a search for self, a search for aliveness. Yeah. So people recognise that, the search. For God, the search for the lost parts of self. Yeah. Um, but this nefarious thing of hiding and secrets and lies. Mm. Mm. What we're dealing with on the on the bigger stage right now is is this consciousness that we need to shift. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong. If you want to have an open relationship. And you have an agreement to do that. That's in integrity where both people agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, very. I believe it's very hard for most people to do that. <laughs> We're not built that way. No. But if you if you want to do that, it's not about right or wrong. It's actually what's going to expand us. What's going to allow us to grow? What's going to fulfil us? What's going to give us bliss and what's peace? What's going to raise our frequency? Yeah. Raise our frequency yeah. and the lower freak. I don't know whether you know the book. This one, do you know this book, Power Versus Force? No, no, it's amazing because it, it, it does all the, um, the frequencies and what we're running on. Go oh. through them, it's on that this thing as well. Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you can see here. So the lowest frequency, so it's being calibrated like kinesiology, right? Yes. So the lowest frequency is shame. That's only 20. Yes. So, so you can see how... Out, is that 20 out of 100 or 1,000? No, out of 1,000. Out of 1,000, yeah, I thought it was, yeah, which is really... So, yeah. yeah, so enlightenment and Christ conscious is... is calibrated between 700 and 1,000. It's yes. really high. Yes. So, so if you, you look at these things that operate when we're sexually just running on, it, on our physicality and our mind, you know, like shame is 20, <clears throat> guilt is 30, apathy is 50, like I don't care, mm. fear is 100. So a lot of this is fear-based, I'm not good enough, it's running, I'm not good enough, um, or I'm scared or whatever. Uh, addictions and desire, this is interesting, right, 125. Very low still, isn't it? Anger, yeah. right. So these, it's been, cali he calibrated that most people are running under 200. Yes. Yeah. Most like if you look at a, an average, because we can go up and down and whatever, but most people are, are calibrating at about two hundred or less. And there's and a, the polarity of fear and love too. You know, you're either in fear or you're in love, and so those ones are around two hundred and below, all fear based. Correct, correct, and the consciousness is lower. Yeah. So that's the other reason we need to look at our 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 paradigms and our shadow and our and our belief systems and why we do what we do sexually in relationships because that is drawing us down and if we want to rise into the 5D consciousness, we can't train. Okay, we might be doing vegetarian foods and on Telegram and in, in all the awakening sites and everything, but if we're in this space... That, that's pulling our consciousness down, we need to look at ourselves holistically. Like, who am I being in my relationships, my sexuality, and in my whole life? Exactly. Like, who am I being? Not what I'm... And, then, and the doing comes from the being. Yeah, yeah. So, and then 200 becomes courage. We start to go into the love consciousness and that's where we bring our sexuality up to our heart and we're prepared. Okay, it can be risky. Mm. Yeah. We can 
be exclusive, we can commit, we can um, be monogamous, we can create trust. Because you've got to remember in these lower, these lower frequencies in, these, in the physical space, a lot of abandonment and fear and all sorts of stuff come up uh, because there's no foundation of exclusivity and commitment and trust there. And isn't one of the greatest risks that we feel is to connect to someone that you really um, resonate with and you really love their energy and then to have the courage to step into a relationship with them where you, you love them so much that you risk actually losing them by going into a relationship with them. And I think that can be one of the greatest, scariest, um, most um, intimidating things for people, you know, when they really look at that. And it's one of human beings' greatest fears is, is the fear of this emotional, more so than physical intimacy, it's this, or going deep into physical intimacy, but it's the emotional intimacy yeah. where we expose ourselves and we're vulnerable and we, we, we risk loss. But ironically, a lot of people play around in this physical space because they're scared of that, yeah. but they actually create more of it. Yes. They actually create more pain yes. than if they came up into the... There's more risk in the lower space, actually, than, yes. than taking the risk to step up into the heart space, right? True, that's true. And it's about showing who you really are at a really deep level and exposing that because at an unconscious level we think, well, if we expose that and someone rejects that, then we're truly rejected because we've exposed who we truly are. But um, like you say, it's actually the, the other area is, is far more um, damaging to us than being able to do that because when we truly expose who we really are, we find that we can do that and it's okay. We're going we're gonna to get through. We're going to survive it. Um, and even if somebody um, doesn't fully appreciate that, at least we're able to learn how to, to express that in the world. Absolutely, and it's a safer space for children. You know, it's a beautiful, safe space for children. The other space where, you know, people are taking drugs and they're, you know, jumping into bed with Tom, Dick and Harry and, you know, it's like it's... it's the, the children, it's such turmoil for them that they're with parents that are in that space. Oh, yeah. um, and I, I, it's it's tragic for me to you know to think that children are being exposed to that, and that's that space of it's all about me, you know. It's it's not about the greater good. No, no. So, um, so anyway, if we go up into that space, you know, that's where, and that we create more oxytocin. It's not there's dopamine as well, but it's oxytocin is the hormone that kicks in more from dopamine, which is the hormone of bonding. Right. Yeah. And it, it's where we feel safer and we bond. Now, obviously, people have got their own shadow and their own stuff that they bring into relationships. And, you know, that that plays out. However, we t we're, we've come up into the hard space. And see, there's a narrative now. Um, this is a very interesting topic um, about, well, you don't have to get married. See, you don't have to get married to, um, I wonder how much this is one of them too. You don't have to get married now to have a relationship. Well, you don't. You don't. Um, however, it's very you know, my thoughts on that is it's very easy to just live with somebody. And I see, um, and, and it's always this more of a back door that gets left open. Yeah. It's a bigger commitment to de declare to a group of people that you love this person. And, and it doesn't have to be a formal marriage ceremony. It could just be a beautiful spiritual ceremony. Absolutely. As, as you're talking, I have an eagle flying past me overhead. Oh, beautiful. They're going to take that. That never happens. <laughs> Where I am. The eagle, so the eagle is, is the highest form of uh, humanity, isn't it? Spiritual. Um, so look up eagle, everyone that's listening. But, wow, that's amazing. An eagle just flew over. Um, 
<laughs> and that's another thing with women is I see this a lot with women, that women will live with a guy uh, quicker than they probably should. <laughs> um, and the security, perhaps. Or, you know, that, well, they genuinely love, might love this guy, fall in love yeah. with this guy. Yeah. But what they don't realise, because men can have babies till they're 90, women have got a biological clock. Yeah. But I, what I see is a lot of women will say, oh, well, but the, the relationship's not moving along and, you know, I've mentioned about, you know, are we going to get married and have children? You know, and it's like, oh, well, what's the rush and blah, 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 blah. So men can live with women and women can do this too. I'm not, but it's, it's, this is, it's more tricky for women because they've got a biological clock. They haven't got endless years to waste. Yes, yes. With a guy that doesn't want to be the father of their children. So, so a man might live with a woman because he really likes her a lot and he enjoys her company and da, da da but he might not see her as the mother of his children or a woman he wants to marry. Yeah. There's a point of difference. Whereas I see... Not all the time, but a, a lot of the time women don't, you know, it's a more serious thing for a woman. Yes, yes, I hear you. So, so the biological clock's running out mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I've wasted six years with this guy that doesn't want to get married. Yeah, yeah. So what, what I'd really love to do, Jane, toward the end of this discussion now is to discuss ways that people can um, work with their sexuality and work in relationships with some, you know, positive ideas and solutions and guidance for people about how to really em uh, empower themselves in these ways because, you know, you've got so much wisdom here. Well, what, are, what are ways that you can um, encourage people? And, and I will say, as well as your five books, I'm going to put links at the bottom to all your work and your books and everything for people to access. There's a good book here that was recommended to me called Tantric Orgasm for Women by Diana yes. Richardson. Yes. And so, you know, books like this are for men and women to read which teach one another how to really honour and respect and love and create the highest potential through uh, tantric relationships. Um, and, and tantric, again, has a bit of a bad name because people don't really realise what that means, but it gets the holistic aspect of the relationship spiritually and on all the different levels to be able to connect to source and to the divine as well. So that, that's a great book. But what are some ideas that you can suggest for people if they really want to um, evolve themselves and work through their shadow aspects and have better relationships and, and to really um, learn to love themselves sexually, uh, you know, embrace their sexuality and, and learn to you uh, utilize their sexuality as a tool to be the best person that they can be lots of things lots of things <laughs> no pressure <laughs> we go there, if we go there we need to, to draw our energy from our heart and we're going to go up right yeah so, so as you say we're going up to the spiritual realm now which is where you can have a spiritual orgasm so for for a woman she can bring up her energy up through her kundalini energy and she can have an orgasm out the top of her head that way yes so, so and a man can too you know it's like it's bringing it's bringing that energy up but it's also um learning to be a gift to the other person. It's not about what I can get or stress release or I want to feel good. It's actually about how can I be a gift to, to my partner and honour them as this sacred person and and to be, um, it's, it's like a, um, it's like a, a, a love meditation, a sexual love meditation, and um, it's it's and it's also about we can know God through sex or feel God or what cosmic consciousness, what I, whatever you want to call it, which is and and it's for men to to learn 
how to control their ejaculation and orgasm through um, through practice, through the tantric or slow sex practice, yes. through the breathing and for the woman as well. It's And it's not all about the, the orgasm necessarily. It's about the practice, the lovemaking practice. And, and, and honouring, I think, honouring the divine feminine in the female and honouring the divine masculine in the male and them coming together to create the um, perfect uh, balance or blend of, of, of what it is to be a human being. And the nefarious thing with um, Tantra is it's been abused in Western culture. Like, like, like I saw Nyla talking about yoga. Did yeah. you see her? Yes, I did. I saw that. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it can be really misused. Um, yeah. And also it can be taught or people practice it separate from that sacred offering of, of yeah. being one with God. They use it just as a physical practice, a physical sexual a means to get something or to be cool or I'm a tantric, whatever. And so it can, can it's, it's, so you've got to be very careful how you use Tantra and also it brings up a lot of deep, deep wounding wounding to be healed. So it's brilliant for healing and um, healing the world, as you said before, but it's coming right up to, to it's, a, it's, a, it's a prayerful sort of practice and there's a whole topic around that. But so, okay, so let's go to, um, and that's where our bliss is, our total bliss is, and when we're in the heart and we're connected and we have a special partner, we can go deep with that. Before we I, get to that special partner, Jane, really important to be able to do that inner work on ourselves so that we get to a point where we can vibrate at a certain frequency or vibration that draws in a, a high quality relationship that really honors respects loves and empowers us because we're at that level where we feel that for ourselves so we magnetize that in in our partner and i think that's a really important point to make that um, if you're just going into relationship after relationship but not doing the inner work and working on yourself you're only generally often going to get lower grade relationships because they're just reflecting back to you what you're not looking at within yourself Absolutely, they're a mirror of us. It's really fascinating. Yeah. So if something's not working, have a look at what that's bringing up. Okay, so my suggestion is to do the counselling or do work around looking at your patterns, your beliefs around sexuality, relationships, woundedness, breaking ties from the past, cleansing cleansing the self getting connected to spirit um if if there's an addiction to porn or watching a lot of porn take time out to get on like reddit and nofab and do the work there's if there's addictions there there's the 12 step programs um russell brand is brilliant he talks about addictions he's been addicted to sex porn drugs everything he's fantastic love him and he's 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 had a very profound deep spiritual journey that's enabled him to heal that yes um, so it's it's and he has a lovely wife now too <laughs> He has a lovely wife now too. Yes, really <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as he said, he wasn't capable of that. Yeah, you know, for yeah, a long time. To for him. Yeah, really nice. And and yes, so um, and in the shadow side, um, if you look at the shadow side of women, um, you know, we we can be overly emotional. We can be martyrs and rescuers, or we can be um, fearful and bitchy and gossipy and um, scattered. And that's, that's when you're out of balance. 
in your we had a balance that shadow or and um trying to get love you might be trying to get love through having a sex promiscuous yes yes sex, uh, different relationships or wanting to please a guy or whatever i remember so, actually asking a girl at school when i was at school and she she had a lot of um sex with a lot of uh, boys at school and i said to her why are you doing that and she said oh look i'm just trying to find someone that loves me yes yeah it's often about that mm. so unconscious yes it's really unconscious um and for men as well you know it's like it's it's, it's like as if we collapse love with sex yes yeah collapse it's like we it's like it's a validation that we're okay or we uh, we look okay or we're lovable or something yes um yes so, so if a woman moves away from her shadow side, then she can be feminine and nurturing and supportive. She'd be in a creative energy, very centred and supportive and open and gentle and empowered, an empowered sacred goddess rather than this scattered, bitchy, you know, <laughs> woman, woman. And then, then if we look at the men and the, mass, the, the, the men, you know, when they're more in their shadow, is that they can be aggressive or controlling. Um, just is the, the energy can be more destructive. Yeah. Yeah. Predatory. Yes. Predatory. Yes. Fearful, angry, controlling, egotistical. Um, addictions, you know, lots of addictions going on, Overpower. dominating and yeah. disconnected, right? Yes. yes. When, the, when the man moves into his authentic masculine, he's, he's more empowered. He's um, protective. Collaborative. Energy. Like he's it's protective. Energy. Yes. yes. I remember Protect looking at Native American Indian um, 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 saying that the, the, the balanced woman is the one that actually does the connecting spiritually to the divine and she, she brings that through for the relationship and then the man is the protector, sort of stabilising energy on Mother Earth and together they make the whole. That's why we're meant to be different. Yes. Yes, and the man is more focused and uh, he's more focused and grounded, whereas a woman tends to be more, um, she's more in her emotional, spiritual energy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So a man will be more focused and supportive and collaborative and he's in his purpose and creativity too. Yes. Whereas in, in the lower in, in the lower energies uh, with addictions and you know, just going out there, you know, wanting to conquer sexually or or make money and all that. It's like it's not coming from this higher purpose of creativity and purpose. It's where a man's power is, is when he knows his true purpose and he's in his creativity and he's protective and grounded and Beautiful, beautiful. Think masculine, yeah. So um, it's it's understanding that, okay, and learning to channel sexual sexual energy up, yeah. Even when we're alone, you know, yes. If if we feel horny or whatever, and and yeah, you feel like you want to go out. If you're single, say you want to go out and you know, let's go and find somebody. You have that urge. Channel that sexual sexual energy up and. Do something creative, or bring it, bring it up, or go go and do some exercise or something. Do, mm. Like sexually, we have to be in control of our sexual energy, not it in control of us. That's true. And also, you when you're finding someone else to satisfy that, it's sort of like um, you're using someone for your own ends. And, and it's not really um, a higher noble way of interrelating with other human beings. Correct. It's, it's got that user energy, absolutely. Yeah. It's all about me, 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 right? And we don't, don't think it is. Um, what else? It's like, you know, this book that you talked about, all these beautiful books, The Tao of Love and, Love and Sex for Guys, Manhood. Is that Steve um, Biddulph, Manhood, Steve Biddulph? Yes, that's a beautiful book. Yes, yes, um, that's great work with him. And because, uh, and there's men's programs in, around, you know, Melbourne Men's Group, I really recommend that, beautiful, beautiful. Um, 
it's like women haven't been initiated into sacred femininity. Yeah. And men haven't been initiated into what what the sacred masculine is. And we need more of those programs and that discussion early on around the age of 12. Yes, and I for do. young, young uh, boys and young girls to be able to find mentors that can holistically um, guide them um, in, all, in these sort of areas uh, with, with wisdom and in integrity, you know, um, so that they have role models that they can... That they can yes, work. yes. Yeah. And there's this book here, which is an interesting one, with Marnia Robertson. Her, her, it is so thick, but it's the neuroscience of sex and how orgasm drives us into the arms of, it's designed to drive us into the arms of somebody else. Wow. That's why actually um, slow sex without orgasm can be very challenging, but that's another practice that creates lots of oxytocin and you're always hungry for your partner. It's a very interesting science. Um, and then this is my, my book, which is talking about a lot of the things that I'm talking about now. So there's books, there's lots of videos on YouTube that you can explore. Um, what else was I going to say? I've written down a few things. Obviously, prayer and meditation and being in nature and connecting to spirit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll, I can leave, I'll leave all your in information below if people want to contact yeah. you for a session. Do you do online sessions or just in person? I do online all around the world when necessary. Uh, I also have an office in Melbourne if people yeah. want to see me face-to-face. -face. But Zoom's good these days, isn't it, Medina? It sure is. <laughs> well, well, Jane, I mean, we could talk forever about this because it's such a fantastic topic and maybe we'll you know in the not too far future we can reconnect with another um chat again but um i feel that um there's so much for people to integrate with what we've talked about so far that might be a good spot to leave it now but um we've got all your information below and i, I can't thank you enough for such fantastic wisdom in an area that is so neglected we all need to put a lot more uh, focus and attention to higher sexuality higher relationships uh, that really um, bring our planet into higher realms of ascension because th this is all crucial so thank you so much for everything that you're doing i think it's so important and essential at this time and is there any final thing that you'd like to share with us jane uh, as we just leave now um I want to say, you know, the, the community that you and I are in at the moment, I acknowledge the awakening, the, the bigger awakening around what's happening. Oh, that's the other thing with my purpose. It's like I said 10 years ago, I had this feeling my purpose was bigger than actually my work. Yes. That there was going to be something major happened in the world that I would be required for. And I believe it's this time now to help be a light in, in, amidst the dark to help people get through this period of time. And it's challenging for all of us because, you know, there's these divisions between our friends and our family and different opinions. It's a challenging time. Um, and I've been challenged, you know, yes. you know, with my own staying in balance with that. And sometimes I feel angry and like it's the greatest challenge of our balance and our sense of self at the moment to be a calm amidst the storm do you like oh, that so true so true to honor one another even in the midst of completely different opinions and to treat each one another with respect and and yeah. love even if we think about things differently it's a mark of a civilized uh, society to be able to do that and to be kind yeah yeah yeah. And, I, and I know the wheels have fallen off occasionally with me on that because it's a challenge. <laughs> I will know. No, but no. <laughs> we're, all, we're all experiencing moments of, you know, realisation that, that, that there's things that we all need to work on within us. Absolutely. Anyway, wonderful. Thank you for the wonderful conversation. It's beautiful. Thank you. Lots so of love. Okay. Love. <laughs> Bye. Bye.